Welcome to the Dang Good Show, episode 001. Life as it is is already tough, so why not learn ways to make it a little bit more comfortable? Each episode, I will deliver straight facts to inspire positive change so you can live a dang good life. If you want to learn how to be more social and self aware, or just want to hear some great advice and life's adventure, then this show is definitely for you. Hey, how are y'all doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, C Dang from beautiful Vancouver of British Columbia. In the past videos, or really, I, this is the first time I'm doing like a podcast you could feel, I never really got to share more about who I am unless you actually follow me on my website, which is c-dang.com or on my Instagram at Christine underscore dang. So who is C Dang? Well, for starters, my name is Christine Dang, <laughs> as I just said. I am a woman with many creative drives, interests, and passions. I love the arts, music, streetwear, and especially them sneakers, and have always been curious to explore in-depth topics about growth, traveling, and food. But what I'm most interested in since I was a kid is people, and to learn what I am capable of. So I've read a lot, and I mean a lot of self-help books, articles, and everything I can get my hands on to find ways to better connect with people, build better relationships, and how I could live a better and happier life. A more meaningful life with purpose. The more I read, the more I broke down a lot of walls and past beliefs. And past beliefs that was actually blocking my potential to be happier and be more of what I can do. I've learned that building a positive relationship with myself is probably the most important relationship I will ever have. And that goes for you as well. You are the most important person in your life. And it's really being real with yourself and taking care of your mind, body, and spirit, in which we tend to neglect. I'm still curious, and I will forever be curious, and I will forever be learning because I know for a fact that we need to have a curious mindset so that way it helps our brain to want to learn and experience more. And that's the beauty of the life that we have. In a world filled with intolerance, anger, and anxiety, I recognize at a young age the value of creating positive connections with others to learn and teach. Learning to make others laugh and smile was a quick way to form a relationship. Alright, so in this episode, we are going to talk about the power of choice. The choice to feel good or bad, to love or hate. A simple shift yet powerful way to live our day-to-day life. If I choose to feel good, I in turn will choose to love and choose to live with a positive attitude. I mean, that's a win-win situation right there. As many of us, COVID has changed our way of life. And like many of us, we are feeling a wee bit more disconnected with the lack of face-to-face connection and fearful for the unknown. So let me tell you, the last few years have been challenging. Lots of ups, lots of downs, but nonetheless lots of experience to learn from. For me, for example, I've learned a lot about my body and more about my mind, especially in the last few months. I have had a lot of in-depth self-realization and past traumas to settle with, but nonetheless, I am grateful for everything that has happened, good and bad, because it has led me here to where I'm supposed to be with you guys. In the past year, I somehow lost my way with this simple yet powerful thought of choice and felt like I was in limbo. Life throws lemons at ya, but I somehow blocked those lemons and forgot how to make lemonade. So to put things in perspective, when life throws challenges at me, I would recognize how I feel, but I didn't really move forward. I didn't choose to feel good. I definitely chose to feel bad a little bit with a bit of shaming, but overall, I just felt very bleh. After a while, that state of feeling becomes empty. Now, I have this goal to read a book a month. In the past few months, I gotta say, these two books I'm I'm going to talk about with you in a bit, not only shook me, but woke me up to the core. So the first book is Mindset by Carol Dweck, PhD, and that talks about the differences between fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Hear me out, okay? Now, a fixed mindset is when you think you cannot do more because of how God made you. When you look at other people who are more successful than you, you would think, oh my God, they were totally born with these gifts. Like, why do I want to waste my time doing things I know that 
I don't have the talent for. This is a dangerous mindset that I've learned. And this is something that I grew up with because it makes you very concerned what other people think of you, of how you be judged, criticized, which honestly brings higher level of depression, stress, anxiety, and the list goes on. While with a growth mindset, it makes you more concerned with improving. Understand that to be great or better will involve a lot of effort. This mindset builds confidence in the midst of challenges. A growth mindset is based on the belief that your basic qualities are the things you can grow and build through effort. Effort, effort, effort. So the saying, practice makes perfect, is very important because everyone can change as long as we apply what we know and experience more. Understanding the differences between the two mindsets will open a lot of opportunity for growth. And understanding that we can all shift from a fixed mindset to a growth one, I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a lot of time, patience, and effort. Now, the second book is called Daring Greatly. How the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live, love, parent, and lead. Wow, I'm more than halfway through the book and already got me feeling some sort of way. A lot of people think vulnerability is a weakness, but it can actually be your greatest strength. I love the part where she mentioned that all artists, whether you are a dancer, painter, singer, filmmaker, or a project researcher, when you are putting your work out there, that's vulnerability. By sharing with the world, you are daring greatly. This is the same for pro athletes who give it their all in games to win championships. But if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. Okay, let me read you a couple passages from this book. Vulnerability is not knowing victory or defeat. It's understanding the necessity of both. It's engaging. It's being all in. Vulnerability is not a weakness. And the uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure we face every day are not optional. Our only choice is a question of engagement. Our willingness to own and act with our vulnerability determines the depths of our courage and the clarity of our purpose. The level to which we protect ourselves from being vulnerable is a measure of our fear and disconnection. So digging deeper into our thoughts, feelings, and understanding where it comes from, it's the most courageous thing anyone can do for themselves, learning to accept who you are and your faults. And if you have faults you are not proud of, do not put yourself down or shame it. The most important thing is that you recognize this right now and you have the power to change any bad habit that was taught to you at a very young age. You are not stuck with what you have. That's the power of the growth mindset. Growing up, for me, growing up in an Asian household, no one opened up or spoke about feelings without being judged, criticized, or bashed for it. But with the newfound knowledge that I have acquired from these books, I can learn to understand the history behind certain actions, accept it for what it is, and learn ways to deal with it and move on. Funny enough, the biggest lesson from these books is that I got to understand the term gaslight. Lighting. <laughs> Here's the first thing that popped up when I googled gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or a group secretly plants the seed of doubt in a targeted individual or group, making them question their own memory, perception, or judgment often invoking conflict within the mind and other changes including low self-esteem. Okay, so we have all experiences in one form or another and if you haven't, you are so lucky. <laughs> I am learning how to recognize it when it's happening and not let it stick whether it's someone doing it to me or if I'm unconsciously doing it to someone else. It's straight up toxic and from experience, very traumatic which takes takes a lot of time to heal. These two books were recommended from an online course I took called The Science of Well-Being, taught by Yale University professor Lori Santos. So already I'm reading two of the many, many books recommended and I can't wait to dive into more. By the way, the online course is free. This class was so popular it went from a small classroom to an auditorium to now online so that way anyone and 
everyone can access it. Did I mention it was free? I will definitely leave some links for you so that way you can check out the books and the course. Definitely worth checking out. Okay, so let's get back to the subject of choices. Now, here's the thing. No matter what you say, you cannot feel happy and sad at the same time. It's just not possible. We can't multitask feelings. Our brain just doesn't work that way. We are capable of feeling one emotion at a time. So we have the choice to choose, to feel good or bad, to love or hate. It's really that simple. But our human minds like to make things interesting and complicated by overthinking situations and of course, our thoughts. Here's a clip of an interview on impact theory I found on YouTube. The greatest fear in modern times is what other people think. So our job is to love others and not give a shit what they think of us. Because we only get one emotion at a time. That's how our brain works, one emotion. So our job is to really find the right state that we want to be in, the right emotional place, and use that rather than let the brain win. And if that is untrained and unconditioned, it will win. The gentleman who spoke is a psychologist by the name of Dr. Michael Gervais. This guy isn't just another psychologist. Dr. Gervais has helped Super Bowl winners, Olympic gold medalists, Fortune 500 companies, and anyone who wants to dominate their field by molding their mindset into that of a high performer. Not only is this interview one of my most favorite ones, but his words hit home like deep he explained why he believes every great change starts with pain about building relationships and balancing accountability with love and breaks down the process of building self-awareness but above all else to always choose to love i'm going to share with you two quotes that i find Ugh, so good. All right. So the first one is, it's vulnerability that is how we train emotional capacity. The more we become vulnerable and demonstrate the courage to do so, we expand our capacity to feel. And the second quote is, in the present moment is where all things high performance takes place. That's where love happens. It's where relationships and the fabric of relationships are strengthened and revealed. It's where our glimpses of wisdom and potential happens. Ugh, my heart. I love the message and the fact that Dr. Gervais teaches and trains pro athletes to be more vulnerable, self-aware, and aware of their teammates. Definitely check out the video after this episode. I will definitely leave a link below. All right, so how are y'all doing so far? Should I continue? I will take that silence as a yes. <laughs> I'm going to jump into the three C's in life choice chance and change you must make a choice to take the chance if you want anything in life to change let me repeat that you must make the choice to take the chance if you want anything in life to change this was jotted down in a notebook and for the life of me i do not remember which book i got this from but the three c's came to me in the most perfect timing in fall of 2011, it was during a time I was lost, confused, and wasn't happy with my life. To others, I had a good thing going. I worked for the famous Chanel boutique, and for those who don't know what Chanel is, Chanel is a French fashion house that focuses on women's high fashion and ready-to-wear clothing, luxury goods, and accessories. So anyways, I worked for the Chanel boutique, and I was making a really good living and living my life in downtown. But at the same time, I had no purpose and I was so, so lost. I knew I had to make changes in my life that would have been super scary and drastic at the time. The three C's helped guide me and motivated me to move forward. So I thought about it really hard. What drastic change could I make in my life that would really take me out of my comfort zone so I could grow? So the first thought was, I always, always wanted to travel the world and learn a new language. I never been anywhere overseas. The second thought was, where can I go that I won't know anyone and start from scratch? And the third, I googled what language is the easiest to learn. To my surprise, it's Korean, Hangul. The University of Oxford said Korean is the easiest language to learn in the world. Boom. This is perfect because I don't know anyone who lives in Seoul and English is apparently their second language, which isn't really entirely true. 
The next few months before the big move, I took night classes to learn basic Korean. I handed in my resignation letter to Chanel. I sold my furniture, moved everything else either in a storage unit or my luggage, bought a one-way ticket to Seoul in South Korea, and lived there for four months. I honestly wish I could have stayed there for a year, but I had to come back for a wedding since I was asked to be a maid of honor. I was asked a few months before I left for Seoul. But overall, the trip was life-changing, guys. I must have an episode that talks about that trip for sure. It was the most amazing and terrifying experience. I am so grateful I made a choice to travel. I took a chance on myself and made the necessary changes to move forward. And it's all because of that quote, the three C's. It's amazing how a few words could hit you like a smack in the face. I was woken up. Another powerful choice that would do a lot of good in both your world and others is to be kind. We need kindness more than ever because 2020 came out with a lot of baggage and it's bringing the worst out of people. It's harder to be kind than clever. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos once remarked on the differences between the gifts you're given and the choices you make. He said, cleverness is a gift. Kindness is a choice. Gifts are easy. They're given after all. Choices can be hard. Small acts of kindness is a choice people make that could positively impact others and brightens their day. And to top it off, it's important to be kind because it makes you feel good about yourself. I've made a video on being polite could get you far. You can check it out after this episode. I will leave a link for you below. So you feeling what I'm trying to say? How the power of choice could be a positive, powerful force? We could choose to feel good. And by choosing to feel good, we will learn to love more. And by learning to love more, being kind will come easily and effortlessly. Now, here's another kicker. Choosing to feel good will kind of steer you towards a positive attitude. But if you choose to feel sad or bad, the outcome is, yup, a negative attitude. All right, so let's take a look at the differences between positive and negative attitude. A person with a positive attitude pays attention to the good and success of others. They are confident, optimistic, and reliable. They pay attention to the good rather than the bad in people, situations, events, and etc. Now, versus with someone who has a negative attitude who only pays attention to other people's shortcomings. They are the opposite of optimistic. They have sort of a hatred for things and kind of very resentful, just to name a few. Not only do they look for problems, but they blame others for the problems. A life filled with a positive attitude is filled with positive impact. When we give the best of ourselves, we get the best from others. Let me repeat that. When we give the best of ourselves, we will get the best from others. With a positive attitude, a single act does make a difference. It creates a ripple effect that can be felt many miles and peoples away. Sir Winston Churchill says it best. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. So our attitude towards people, places, things, or situations determines the choices that we make. If we dive a little deeper, you will learn that there are three different types of attitude that people will have. Positive attitude, negative attitude, and neutral attitude. If you're curious to learn more about attitudes, I have made a video called How a Positive Attitude Will Make Your Life Better. Check it out when you can. I'll leave a link below. Thank you so much for joining me on The Dang Good Show. Make sure you check out my website, c-dang.com or follow me on Instagram at christine underscore dang. If you like the show, subscribe where you can so you never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you find value in the show, I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up and a good ratings on iTunes or if you simply tell a friend about the show. That would help me out too. I'm going to leave you off with some words I found randomly scribbled in my notebook. 
Don't ever attach yourself to a person, a place, a company, an organization, or a project. Attach yourself to a mission, a calling, a purpose only. That's how you keep your power and your peace. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Dang Good Show, episode 001. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm C Dang, signing out. I'll catch you next time.